Uh, but Ekta, as you were talking about, uh, a lot of news in the pharma space today as well. So, uh, Gland Pharma definitely in focus as well. Yes, absolutely. They made an acquisition which they announced last evening. You know, there was a lot of buzz that there's a board meeting taking place yesterday. So, what are they going to announce? But they've announced an acquisition of a CDMO contract development manufacturing company in Europe. And uh, it is for 120 million euros. The entire acquisition amount can probably go up to over 200 million euros if you do uh, count in the debt. In fact, I did catch up with Mr. Srinivas Sadhu, who's the MD and CEO of Gland Pharma. And I began by asking him about the flat, flattish sales performance of uh, Synexi, the company that they've acquired. Listen. I think I'll go back to what I just said. You know, when they started off, it's the most of the uh, revenue was coming from Ampil, which is a low margin business, which they're moving out. They acquired a couple of sites in the last few years. In 2007, they acquired another site where they have installed capacities. And if you look at capacity utilization of these sites, are, are pretty low in some of the lines. And that's where the projects are happening today and the revenue start building up. And as you know, in injectables, 80-85% uh, of fixed costs after a threshold, Whatever you actually increase in the revenue, actually most of it flows down to the EBITDA. And we're pretty confident that, you know, the more, more utilization of the other sites which they have uh, come into existence in the last couple of years, the margins will flow down and we'll see a better margin profile. And this we're talking about standalone as a, as a Senexi. Now with Gland coming in, you know, there are several synergies which we can work on which will improve the margins, uh, you know, to where we are in the next couple of years. Can we assume that margins will probably come down on a blended basis, say, to a range of 25 to 30 percent initially? In the near term, uh, it could be dilutive in terms of margin, probably, you know, for the first year. But like I said, you know, in the, uh, we are looking at a long-term driver, maybe 12, 18 months down the line. Uh, once, uh, uh, you know, the most of the projects which are ongoing at this uh, standalone company starts kicking in, the margin improvement you'll see. And also, you know, once the synergies of Gland and Synexi come together, the improvement will be more. But you must be privy to what the parent company concerns are when it comes to their parent company, Fawson International, which has, in fact, been downgraded uh, because of its uh, over-leveraged concerns. From that perspective, any kind of communication that you can share with us? Uh, no, honestly, you know, uh, you know, if you look at uh, Fosun, it's a huge conglomerate. So we don't have interaction on a daily basis what they do at a Fosun international level. It's just not farm. I know there are hundreds of companies under them. So we're just one, one arm un under Fosun Farm. Fosun Farm themselves have, uh, you know, more than 70, 80 companies. Uh, so, you know, we, we read news as you read. And, uh, you know, we just talk about operational level budgets and stuff like that. But... And nothing on, on this sort, uh, and we don't have any official community. And there's no holdback in uh, in terms of CapEx as well as strategy and uh, the overall plan for Gland in India. Yeah. So everything everything is, uh, you know, as per our plans, uh, you know, whether investments or M&A, uh, you know, we have a roadmap, clear roadmap, what we have laid down. Uh, you know, when we, even when we went for IPO, we clearly said, where are we looking at from an organic perspective? And what are the products we're getting into? And that, nothing changed, honestly. Now, other than the macro environment, we changed uh, last 18 months. I think uh, basically changed from the strategy perspective.